Hey everyone, this is Lomi, and today I'm unboxing my new airbrush. My master airbrush I'd been using for years recently broke, and instead of repairing it, I decided it was time to upgrade to something a little nicer. When I was shopping for a new airbrush, it came down to the HP CS and the HP C+. There are a few differences between them, but one of the biggest seems to be the unique 0.35mm needle the HP CS comes with. The cup is the same size as the HP C+, which is one of the reasons it came down to these two. I also like Iwata's 5 year warranty, though I hope I won't need it. I spent a few weeks thinking on airbrushes and even ran a poll on Instagram asking for opinions, which unexpectedly ended up being a perfect 50-50 split. In the end, I consulted a friend who has used both the HP CS and the HP C+, and she felt the Eclipse would meet all my needs and preferences. I was able to get this for about $130, which was almost $100 less than the HP C+. If it does what I need at the lower price point, I'll be happy. So I'm going to slide the box open and we'll see how it looks. I'll take some of it apart and we'll see how it compares to my old master brush. The company has really nice presentation. The box feels nice in hand, and seeing that a company cares about packaging usually says a lot about their products. It comes with a nice big sticker, probably meant for those who use their airbrush as part of a business. I see a lot of labels like these declaring what products people use in places like automotive customization shops. The Eclipse is, from my understanding, the most popular brush for airbrushing cars, so if I ever decide to decorate a van with 80s metal band type art, I'll be set. So here's the airbrush itself. It's a pretty basic kit, since I already have all the filters and hoses and things I need. It just has the brush, a small tube of lubricant, and wrenches for brush maintenance. This airbrush is really heavy compared to my master brush. It's solid, smooth, and it just feels like it's going to be nice quality. The trigger is pretty stiff. The tension of the spring inside can be adjusted if someone likes it softer, but I like that really firm feel that gives me a lot of trigger feedback. The back, man, that is really screwed on tight. Let's see how much of this I can get apart. I'll start with the cap, that'll be easy. I didn't like the cup cap on my master brush, and I'm not sure if I'll like this one. We'll see. It fits really tight though, and it's heavy enough that the airbrush actually feels a bit more balanced with it off. This handle is really tight on there. So the handle is just a basic cutaway handle that lets you access the needle chuck if you need to manually pull back the needle. But that's it. We'll take that off, take off the chucking nut, and have a look at the needle. I can tell you right away that this needle is much nicer than what came with my master airbrush. It's smoother and a lot heavier, and just looking at it I'm pretty sure it's bigger too. We'll take a closer look at that in a minute. I want to open up the nozzle, but it's not moving at all, so I'm glad they included wrenches. There's a large spanner wrench for this part of the head cap. The Eclipse has kind of an interesting nozzle construction, but it seems like it's a bit sturdier made than other options, so I think I'll like it. The rubber o-ring on the head cap is really thick and heavy duty and looks like it's been lubricated well at the factory, so this brush is really ready to go. I'd like to get the back out, but it's so tight. It's all tight. Whoever put this together really didn't want me to take it apart, and I hope it doesn't have to be screwed this tight to use it because I am not strong enough to get it that tight again. Let's see if I can get the nozzle out. It's sticking now. So there's the round needle cap, and the nozzle did come out pretty easy. This brass head is the nozzle, and instead of having to deal with screwing it in, you just drop the whole nozzle in place. It'll make quick needle changes a dream. I cannot get the nozzle cap off for the life of me, so I guess that's staying put together. You can see how the nozzle just slides right into the head cap though. It's held in place by compression when the brush is put together. Though this comes with the 0.35mm needle, there is a 0.5 needle available for this brush that I'll probably buy later down the road. For now I'll put the nozzle back together, and we'll move on to look at the differences and similarities between this and the Master G233 I've been using for 6 years. 
The Master G233 is designed to be more similar to the HPC, so one of the big differences is the handle. I'll show you what I mean. So while the Master G233 has a cutaway handle as well, it also has the adjusting screw on the very back of the handle. This is similar to the HPC+. Tightening the adjusting screw limits how far back you can pull the trigger, meaning if you're doing really fine work that needs limited amounts of paint flow, you can set that to ensure you'll never blast your project with paint. The Iwata Eclipse lacks this, which won't be a problem for me since I never used that feature on my G233, but it might be a deal breaker for someone who does a lot of super fine detail work. Another major difference between the two is that the G233 has a separate air valve housing, so the housing can easily be removed while cleaning the airbrush. The air valve housing is built into the Eclipse. All the interior components are still removable, but since there are rubber o-rings in the air valve, it will have to be dismantled any time I want to soak the body of my brush and cleaner. The weight of the rubber o-rings on the water brush are one thing I immediately like, as the o-rings on the master brush tend to become stretched and worn out pretty quickly. You can see I've got one on the front here that stopped fitting well after I dismantled my brush four or five times trying to get it working before I found the trigger had broken. There's no point in replacing this on a broken brush, so I just left it. These lightweight o-rings made the master brush prone to air leaks that could prevent paint from spraying. With the tighter seal the Iwata rings make, that's a problem I won't miss. Another difference I like about the Eclipse right away is that the cup is shaped like a funnel, meaning it's easier to be sure every trace of paint is right where I need it. There's some gunk I didn't bother cleaning out of the master brush after it broke, so try to ignore that. Though I didn't have problems with the shape of the fluid cup on the master brush, the shape of the Eclipse is a lot more precise and it means I'll need to put in a little less paint to get a steady feed. Hopefully you can see the shape okay. It's so shiny that it's hard for me to tell if it's in focus or not. The triggers have a pretty different shape, with the master trigger being an angled wedge and the eclipse trigger is a lot more of a button. The grip of the trigger on my old brush is actually a bit more comfortable, so that's one place it wins in my opinion. While we're doing a close comparison, let's have a look at the needles. This is the 0.5 master needle, so it's the biggest tip it came with. Size of the tip aside though, the Eclipse needle is huge. It's longer, thicker, and heavier than the master needle. As I mentioned before, it's also a lot smoother, which means it's less likely to have paint stick to the needle and cause clogs. Now let's see if I can get the guts out of the brush. The trigger just pulls right out, similar to the master brush, but this back section is what's worth looking at. As it unscrews, you'll notice that the trigger stays pushed forward until the very end. This is what houses the spring that controls the pressure against the trigger. This whole thing slides apart, and you can replace the spring with one that's a little softer or harder depending on your preferences. A spring from a ballpoint pen makes a great replacement if you want a softer trigger. As I mentioned before, the one it comes with is really stiff. The spring's in there, but I don't want to lose it on the first day, so I won't pull the whole thing apart. The last thing we'll look at is the tiny tube of airbrush lubricant that came with it. This doesn't look like much, but a little goes a long way, and this should last a good while. Since I've been handling the needle, I'm going to go ahead and cut this open and re-lubricate it before I put it back in. This stuff feels really nice, but it seems a little heavier than the Badger brand airbrush lubricant I used for my master brush. Fortunately, it doesn't really matter what kind of lubricant I use on the airbrush, so long as I use it frequently. I'll probably use up this little bottle so I don't have to worry about spilling it, but then I'll stick with my bottle of Badger Brush Lubricant. I'll add just a little at the trigger to make sure the needle's going through smoothly, and that's about it. It's a heavy brush, nice and solid, and I can't wait to give it a try. Even though my old master brush had more features, I think this will work well for me. The hard part now is deciding which project to tackle with it first. And that's all for today. Thanks for joining me again. See you next time. Bye.